Oh, it's so lovely to see everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out, everybody. It's so nice to see all these faces I haven't seen for three years. This is really lovely. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm Elsa B. Dixon, and I'm delighted um, to share a little time with you today to talk about uh, an eco-art project. So um, I'm going to get started. Uh, so those of you who do know me know that I started off with silkworms. Um, I'm from South Africa, and uh, there's a big French community that came down in the 1800s and the 1700s um, and uh, you know they they invested more in the wine business but generation after generation passed down all these guild uh, silk raising secrets and um, so I started with silkworms spin, uh, getting silkworms to spin small forms and uh, then I moved uh, to bees. I worked with a wonderful apiary at George Mason University and um, then I had this opportunity in 2019 and I just want to talk a little bit about it and uh, just make people aware of what's coming and um, perhaps even solicit engagement of some sorts, especially for artists that are interested in eco things or artists that you know, might you want to use these wings as an element or a medium or just somehow get in, involved because it's, it's a big thing. Um, so I did apply for this grant uh, through Penn State University and I got the grant, but then there was this strange thing. Everybody called me in, sat me down and said, you've got the grant, but you're not gonna work with bees. And I went, what? Well, I I put in this grant um, and they said how would you feel about working with spotted lantern flies so <laughs> you know in a, a couple of months time I think I had two or three months to mull it over I had to come up with a whole new plan and uh, this is our plan uh, there were lots of mistakes made um, I see Gobby's in the room I want to give her a hug <laughs> Um, so Gabi worked with me at Glenstone and uh, we saw a lot of art coming through and she was the, re the registrar there so you know I got to learn that art has to always come in modular parts if you're going to assemble it and uh, you know take it apart again so that's what we did. Uh, we, and and uh, we had an exhibition at Glenstone uh, Fishley and Weiss, and there's a lot of good things that I learned from those two Swiss artists, and I'm going to follow their advice throughout my PowerPoint, so look closely because my charge was at uh, Penn State to work with 400 students and faculty and about 10 community organizations, and to come up with a plan to do this in three months. So. Um, it was it was challenging. So first, you've got to find your muse, right? And our muse at the time was the spotted lanternfly. So Lehigh Valley, where I did the project, uh, is a, actually a big observation center uh, for Penn State, where they are looking at this insect. It is a beautiful insect but it has no predators. Birds stay away from it because it looks like a butterfly. Butterfly wings are poisonous, so birds just don't touch them. Uh, so, you know, birds just don't know that they're really yummy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is also the spotted landed fly. So this is the confusion. It, this, uh, well, I will tell you a little later, but it entered, it's an invasive that entered the United States in uh, 2012. But it only became, um, you know, something that was put on agricultural awareness lists in 2014. But it has, has multiple stages, so it has six instars. And this is what it looks like in the fourth instar. 
and the first instar, it's black and white, and then it's red and white. And at first it looks like a little tick, but it grows up to be very large and it has these beautiful musky pink wings with spots on it. And the bottom parts over here look like writing to me. They, they're very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wings. You can see uh, them stretched out over there. But here you see what they look like in May, what they look like in June, what they look like in July. So how do you tell the public to watch out for this? And why? Um, do you have to tell the public to watch out for this? And we'll go into that. This is the life cycle, and you can see the, uh, the egg sac, and then you can see the instars. And it's right here between these two that one needs to disrupt the life cycle. Now, I've, I've been used to working with bees. I'm not used to being asked to disrupt a life cycle. I'm, I'm just... You know, I want to sustain life. But now the problem is when you have invasives like this, and as aggressive as this is, um, it, it becomes a huge problem, and, and I'll, I'll talk about that. So Fishley and Visegate know the problem. What is the problem with this particular insect? And uh, why are we supposed to, or Government sites, you know, uh, indicate that, you know, one should not only report it, but kill it if you can. So here you have what it looks like in the various stages. That's the first problem. The problem is that they look like four different insects. The problem is that they have no predators. The problem is that they wipe out local food, agriculture, and gardens. And the problem is that they are beautiful. If you have something quite this beautiful, it's very hard to solicit people to kill them. Uh, but this is actually what they do to plants. So you can see on the left-hand side a tree that has the, the sap literally draining out of the holes that they poke into the main arteries. And this is what they do. They work together in teams. They are phenomenal, very, very clever. Um, one would drill a little hole right down to the center artery of the tree, and then they'll take turns feeding off of that, and then they'll do a new spot. And, uh, and the sap of the tree, it, it's literally like slicing your throat open, the tree just dies. But now, they're not done with a tree. Then when they become that big, and you can see how big they are, and they do, they literally infest you could see them, they walk, just a wall. Um, uh, they secrete this very sweet, sweet, uh, you know, spray. And this spray attack, uh, uh, attracts anything from ants to, um, you know, uh, uh, wasps and anything that's going to go back in and damage the tree even more. And it also uh, makes um, the tree susceptible or not susceptible to, to, to mold because the mold grows on it and then the tree can't, you know, fight against it. So it's, they really, really do tremendous damage. And if you think of your local industries, and New York is going crazy right now, you're not seeing any articles, which is what happened in Pennsylvania. It's so embarrassing. The damage is so much that nobody wants to talk about it. Um, but the fact is that it wipes out your vineyards. It wipes out your pitted fruit farms, all your local agriculture that we have at farmer's markets. It just wipes it out. Here you have um, when they come out, you know, and uh, where they are and what they like to eat. But, and it's a wide range of things. They like um, the tree of heaven. It's also an invasive species. And um, I'll talk a little bit about that once we start taking questions. Uh, this is an old map, um, but, and, and I've asked them to upload new maps. We're gonna run this project again in Virginia, as we did in Pennsylvania. 
When I got the feeling when we were doing this in Pennsylvania, it was too late. It was already, that you can see the large infestated areas. Uh, and this, well, in 2020 it entered um, Virginia. And uh, I'm hoping that Virginia is going to be much more aggressive. It's also entered New York State. And I think, um, you know, uh, I, I'm hoping to go up there and talk to the art groups up there because I think this is really something that they can take a look at and investigate because it's ironically the artists that get the word across. Um, there, I, I will go back to that and we will take a look. If, you know, no one wakes up in the morning and says, well, let me check the agricultural site. And that's why art is so important uh, to start engaging people because you do need to create that buzz. You do need to create um, that awareness through, through art. Uh, I had to learn to listen when, I mean, I was just dead set against killing them at first. And I said, look, you know, you just can't ask me to disrupt the life cycle. But I was convinced that this is what they wanted. Um, and uh, we really needed, I, I attended a council meeting where 75 people from across the city were literally throwing tomatoes <laughs> at their councilmen and just yelling and screaming at the top, of just, just livid about this issue. There were people from old age homes that had invested a lot of money in the gardens, uh, they pay a certain stipend, they were there, they were shouting, the teachers were shouting, saying, we don't have enough material on this. No, we don't want to just go to the sites, we really need curriculum on it. It was just a mess, um, but you know, everybody was unhappy. Um, so there is this kill on site incentive on all of these government websites. Um, and right now it's 2023, and once again, if you see it, kill it. This is now what we're doing in Virginia. So this is the triad. Uh, I do expect that the... Um, hi. <laughs> Please do. Um, so I do expect them to be entering not only larger areas in Virginia, but definitely the DC area. There, there are lots of areas in Maryland already where you can see the spotted lantern fly. So uh, we're in for a rough summer uh, and we are a couple of months away. Uh, I know we've just come through COVID. We don't want to hear this, la, 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 la. you know, um, it's just one of those things. Um, so what did Penn State University do? You know, I, I think they really were pushed to, to do something and their first reaction was, well, let's start um, an art program, a campus art program. And this is where it all started. So I worked at uh, Penn State Lehigh Valley. It's just outside of Pennsylvania um, in the Lehigh Valley and it, had a very large observation uh, station and field where I could observe at my leisure. These are the two scientists, so Karen Cackley and Pam, and they, uh, Pam Borowski, and they were so hilarious because when I arrived, they were all dressed in spots and they had their spotted lanternfly necklaces on and they were the sweetest and I could not have gone through this project without them because I will explain as we go along what worked, what didn't work, what might work in the future. Um, but they showed me what an egg sac looks like and clearly it looks like a piece of bark. So that's not where we could disrupt. Uh, on the left hand side they plant a tree of heaven which is their preferred um, you know, plant, and uh, this 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 sort of interested me because I think artists are logical thinkers. We we problem solve all the time, and I'm with these scientists, and 
Um, not to say that they're not doing the same thing, but they don't look at things the same from the same direction. So I'm, I'm always thinking, well, you know, the incentive with the trees is it's their, it's their main feed, so let's cut it down. I'm going, well, why are you cutting it down? Why don't you surround a vineyard with it so that they hit those trees first and then lay their eggs and infest the trees and then you cut the trees down in the late season and you can ha control your vineyard, you can protect your vineyard that way. No, no, no. They felt that the chances of it attracting the insect to the vineyard was greater. And I'm going, you know, I don't know. What is it? We should, we should at least have one vineyard owner that say, I'm going to take a chance and see what happens, you know. So there's all this experiment. We just don't know what we're doing at this point with this insect. And Pennsylvania tried as much as they could to control it. There's no controlling it. And I think we're learning that about everything. We can't control politics. We can't control it. <laughs> we, we can't control things, but we can, if we communicate and get together, we can form control groups. Um, and uh, so there we go, spotted lanternfly. Um, uh, uh, you know, seed sacks, and you really can't see it. They're totally invisible. This is the, what they had in the lab for me to look at. Now, I enjoyed being outside and watching the, the, what they had in the field, but this is what they were doing. They were just collecting stuff with nets and things. Um, but the project moved forward. I said, yes, okay, we'll do it. And I had a lovely crowd. So this is the art department. <laughs> at Penn State and Ann Lalek over there in the red and uh, yeah they built some spot lanternfly wings and we had the whole faculty and administration come out and um, you know by this time I decided what it was and we had discussed what it was that we were going to do. So I ran down to Georgetown um, makerspace as fast as I could uh, John, uh, uh, Don Undine was a, a, the, the manager at the time. I said, Don, you've got to help me out here. You just have to. You know, this is what I want. This is the pattern I need. And, and um, so uh, he, uh, uh, you know, did the, the, the plans for me and printed it out for me. And I cut out the... Um, uh, I, one thing that was nice about being the executive director at the Danville Museum was... I knew all of the places in Danville that could actually cut it out for me. So most of it was cut out by um, uh, a little printing company down in Danville, Virginia. What is it? Uh, what are we looking at? So you can't see what, what you're looking at, but I'm going to show you what you're looking at. So this is all I had in my hands pitching this thing to Penn State. Um, I got there and I said, okay, this is what we're going to do, guys. We are going to, because we've got to work with 400 people and community partners, we are going to do it in little parts. And the inside is going to be a big red dot, just because, you know, we want to honor the spot. And it's going to be called um, Spotted Lanternfly Zones of Syncopation. If you look at a musical score, SFZ, you know, that's that interstice. That's that time when you don't have the note, you have the, the, the stop, the silence for a little while. And what we're going to try to do is silence this invasive for, for a little while by participating in this collaborative project. Um, so I said, okay, well, this is what it's going to look like. First of all, um, once again, Gabi, you'll recognize this. Um, a lot of artists use the Fibonacci code because it's so significant a system. Uh, when a tree grows, its branches grow according to the Fibonacci sequence. If you look at the inside of a sunflower, it's a Fibonacci sequence. I said, we're going to build a Fibonacci sequence. So we're going to have, um, there's six instars, so we're going to do six numbers in the Fibonacci code, which is one, one, two, three, five, and eight. 
So we're going to build a little pizza that's one foot, another little pizza that's a, another one foot, two feet, three feet, five feet, and eight feet. So it was super ambitious, which got me into trouble. <laughs> Here it was great. We were just dealing with the tangible plans and everybody laid it down on the ground and we went to breweries, chatted about it, got everybody on board. They said, this, this looks fantastic. It's going to be great. You know, we totally understand it. This is really nice. Um, and the science people brought on some VR. Apparently the science departments can order, um, you know, you can put on these goggles and you can see a spotted land and fly and you can walk around it. Um, it was not very far along at that point, but you know, it was also an in interactive experience. And then, oh man, the marketing people at Penn State were phenomenal. They, they were going to all of the ad places. They already had all these things printed out. You see a little hat over here and you've got stickers and um, you know, so we had all of our uh, backup and um, we had all the students were collecting all of this data. So uh, what you see over here are different infestations and different stages of infestations. So you've got um, uh, this is Pennsylvania uh, and you can see where all the infestations are and you can see what stages they are so that they could monitor it. And so we were looking at that as well. And I was going great guns explaining the project uh, for the Penn State media markets um, and, and their little uh, um, video department. And um, Elise Schaefer built this wonderful installation that she would change all the time as the project progressed. Um, but we continually had to ask questions, um, you know, as we're moving into this with 400 people in tow. I mean, you can't disappoint these folks. So what we did was we got everybody involved in the hunt. Okay, so we had three, I had three visits and I was down in Danville heading a museum um, and I had to tell them, well, <laughs> But I drove, I drove up and I stayed for uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then I drive back down. And we did this three times. So this was our first site visit in August. And, you know, the land and fly isn't big yet, but um, so we went hunting for them. And uh, some of them had emerged. So there were quite a few uh, ready to go. And we got just everybody involved. Um, catching them, putting them in little baggies, and then Karen Cackley came in uh, with the idea of how to kill them. So she said, just put them in the baggie, have them give it to us live or not live, and we'll put them in the freezer, and they'll just go to sleep very, very um, gently. And she basically collected all of the land and flies we used. Uh, here we are, everybody's involved. There's the little baggie that either goes to the art department or to Karen Cackley in the science department. And here we have everybody at the brewery. Now we've, we've put them in the refrigerator and um, they're dead. And we put them on a plate, take them down to the brewery and everybody's been, you know, actively eating crabs, right? So this is the same thing. You just say, okay, they're your, you don't eat them, but you can de-wing them. And here, here's the whole administrative team um, at, at a brewery um, just creating the maquettes. Uh, this is uh, Tamron McDermott. She was the curator for multiple projects and she was the one that was just phenomenal and super helpful to me. Uh, this is the maquette um, and that's what it looks like. Um, and then here we're running into nonsense and sense. Sense and nonsense. Um, so what you have to do is you've got to have a system to tell 400 people how to do something uh, that, you know, they will feel okay with. So basically the basic concept was, look, look at the wings. Some of them are red. Some of them are pink. 
Um, the red ones are black on this side and red on that side, so you can, you can choose. But basically, think of a mandala and move from the inside out. And that seemed to work fine, but people did go crazy. And some people just started making their own designs. And I went, Whoop, what do we do now? And then it looks spectacular no matter what. And I went, ah, just go on with it. But um, we had 400 students, community groups, uh, but so November, what happens in November? Exams happen in November. Oh. And everybody uh, enthusiastically participating, all the student councils, all the this, stop cold. Just stop cold. And I'm getting these frantic calls from Ann Lalek. She said, Hasabi, <laughs> we're not going to be done. It's terrible. So I drove up there. I said, don't worry, Ann, don't worry. So I drove up there. I picked up one of the pieces because we had them in sections. And I drove it down to Chatham, a blank piece that Anne was very worried about. And we actually got libraries to participate down in Virginia. <laughs> and so, so we did solve the problem, um, uh, but it was, it was hit and miss. Um, so yeah, and you do have to accept chance as inevitable. Uh, thank you, Fishley and Vice. Um, and, and you just have to kind of remind yourself, all right, what's the end goal and how to get there? Uh, now, this indicates how we kept the groups apart. So if you were faculty, you had a color, specific color. If you were a community organization, you had a specific color. If you were a student, um, you had a specific color. So in the end, you could tell what parts you did. Um, say it's simple, um, and that's what I learned through this, you know, do not make anything complicated when you're working with 400 people. Do not, just keep it simple, uh, keep it straightforward. Um, what Penn State did wonderfully is they allowed me to talk to the students even when I was not there. So they did this four screen television that they set up in the lobby of the university and they had their student groups always do all of their events in front of this. And um, this little video, and then they projected the video on the project where I'm standing up there, I'm introducing myself, I'm saying who I am, why are we doing this? And um, then, uh, you know, it, show, it also tells how to do it, how to get involved, you know, so we did that. Um, and it was, it, it worked very well. I mean, I, I, I can't believe uh, how many people participated. Now here, here are the mistakes. You know, we didn't anticipate the November exams. We didn't anticipate, um, <laughs> we had a huge fight one day because Anne and Liz from the art department had booked a outdoor festival where we would be putting lantern flies and I went, uh, and sure enough, you know, we carried one piece out and the wind was just whoosh, and, and you know, you couldn't put wings out there. And I just looked at them, I said, guys, I, I wanna be a willing player, but this is never, no, do not, let's not do this. And we also did elementary schools, which did not work out. <laughs> Middle schools, yes. High schools, yes. But elementary schools, absolutely not. You should have seen that. <laughs> Fortunately, it was small enough, but, uh, and a lot, lots of shrieks and stuff. <laughs> um, so uh, these are two elementary school, uh, uh, yeah. No, this is a middle school. And, um, they had finished their parts and what happened was the parts were then brought back to Lehigh Valley. I was in the meantime back in Chatham talking to my next door neighbor, Bo Bircher, and he uh, was creating the inside forms and he's got this great uh, painting um, set up where he can do auto paint and uh, that was the insides were done like that. The main thing to have remembered was just to stay calm, stay calm through all of it. 
Um, so we, it was November, I was up there, we weren't finished, but the cards went out and the radio station interviews happened. Uh, we got a lot of media coverage. It was, it's enough to last me an entire lifetime. You know, I mean, every media outlet was on this and uh, it was lovely. And, you know, for artists who never really get recognized, I loved it, you know, it's just, oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, uh, here we're putting it together and you can see the parts that were not done. Uh, we were all up there during Thanksgiving weekend and Tamarin is inside, she's putting it together. Um, and then what we did was we put the circles inside with a very heavy Velcro. Now these were meant to be tables and I kept on saying to the art department, okay, we're gonna display them as tables and they absolutely did not want that. They wanted it on the wall. And once again, I refer to Gabi, you know, when, when we had tables out, the engagement was so much more phenomenal because people feel they, they have to look, they have to engage. If it's a table, you know, it's nice looking at stuff laid out on a table. Um, you, you, you do get sucked in by that. Um, so that's what I was trying to do. And here is looking down on it uh, after it was installed and it was in the foyer um, of, the, uh, of the university. And uh, we did have the opening on December 3rd. Um, and then they moved it to the wall. <laughs> so that's what it looked like on the wall. And I was able to move it around to different places. I had a solo show at the Riverview Gallery, which is a fantastic gallery in Lynchburg. Uh, wonderful director there, uh, Kim Sorensen. And I did a sort of a collective insect show with the spotted lanternfly, the bees, and the um, silkworms but that's what it looked like there and unfortunately that piece was right under air conditioning so <laughs> by the time i picked it up it was a little bold in one spot but this is you know this was supposed to be ephemeral and not lost at all but my next door neighbor bill bircher um, got most of the ten thousand dollar grant because he built those platforms very solidly and uh, he also embedded the the foam uh, beautifully and i think that's that they are now indestructible virtually and you can use them over and over again and all you have to do is get new wings. And this is why I say, this will be running in Virginia. This might be running in New York. Uh, I can do one thing at a time, but I think um, it's really good at getting people, it's almost like a quilting bee. Everybody comes together, the students came together, the community groups came together, and then there are conversations that go back and forth, and there's always information that goes out with it. Uh, so, yeah, remember to smile. I did smile when I got the $10,000 check. Mm -hmm. uh, here is a wonderful website. Uh, now, I do have, in the beginning, I had some things, some websites for you to take a look at. And I will go back to that uh, so that you can see my email and uh, also my uh, telephone number. So if you need more resources, uh, you can generally... Uh, my main to go to is this, and also Provisions Library is fantastic. So I don't know if you know Provisions Library. Um, I was at George Mason, so it was just on my back, back door step. And um, Don Russell there is absolutely wonderful, and you can do any research that you want, and he will bring forward any of the information that you would need to start your grant writing process, or anything like that. Um, yeah, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you, people. Thank you so much, and it's so lovely to see everybody.